It is so great to see you. How are you, my friend? I am doing well. I'm doing very well. It's so good to see you. For our friends on Inside Edition that don't know, Michael Irvin and I used to co-star on a little show called The Best Damn Sports Show, oh, period, God. on was, Fox. Right, the start of of my career. I was just going to say, that was your first was, broadcast that job, That was right? my first one. And, and, and it was a great cast. But we had so much fun. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was innovative let's call it that at the time because it, it was all it was physical comedy on the sports show that a lot of people were not doing and now you see a lot of it all around everybody's trying to be the next best damn sports show period but there was only one of those shows right. now it could never be done today because it was just of the time kind right of right right but but what's very interesting is is it was ahead of its time in the sense like, okay, this was before cell phones and everything got to the level where it is now, where it has all the information. So we were already ahead of time saying, we're going to bring you in with entertainment and then educate you. You know what I mean? And right now, that's what everybody has to do because all the information is really in the iPhone, it's in, it's in the phone. So entertainment, we were ahead of it, and, 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 and I'm proud of what we did at Best Dance. So proud of it. Me, you, Stephen A., all of us. Tom talking, Arnold. You know, Tom Arnold, Chris, Chris Rose was there, you know, John Sally, man, really John fun. Crook. And we had a great so crew, so we had a great crew. And and we got to debate things that happen every, you know, nowadays when there's controversies in sports or there's a, a right. you know, a coaching change or whatever, You've got people talking about it, but back then we talked every single day for two hours about every controversy, every debate. There was a debate about the baseball strike, and I was on the side of the fan, and you stuck up for me. I will never forget this one moment, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna post, I'm gonna send it to you because it just meant so much to me. What about this now? Yeah, it's, I think it's great. I think it, uh, you know, since the players didn't set a date, I think now it, it, it should mean more to us that they're getting so close that they don't need to at a strike date, and I hope they do. They can't go on strike. It's it's going to be uh, detrimental to this game. Plus, no one think, will come. if there was a strike, I think Montreal would actually have an increase in attendance because you get drifters, <laughs> you know, that can come into the stadium occasionally. Are, <laughs> they just, are, are they just postponing the inevitable, though? Are they going to come up with a strike date on God, Friday? They and postpone the show. <laughs> <laughs> they are scheduled to meet again on Friday, right. the player union reps. But still, I guess I, I feel better that the, that they're closer on several issues. Let's take it back to the 1994 strike, which actually started on this date, August 12th. Uh, <laughs> how much did you lose, personally? Yeah. yeah. How much? Chris, yeah, I, I told you in a meeting, four million, but I'm thinking, I, after I started thinking about it, the Phillies did offer me like a two-year, seven million deal, and they got canned because of the strike, so seven million, eight million. Probably. And you still feel good that you went out on strike? Yeah, I was tired. I wanted to time off. I was Sammy Sosa. Come on now. <laughs> no, I, you know what? I, I, it was right for, cause, for the young players. That's why, that's why we did it. They did it before for us so we can make the money we're making and continue to have the freedom to go to other teams and play. So, yeah, for the younger players, it was worth it. You know, I think oftentimes we think of this as being the players against uh, the owners, that there's two sides of the issue. There's really four sides of the issue. There's the players, the owners, the fans, and the people that are going to be economically impacted if the players go on strike. And those are the people that work at the stadiums. Those are people like Ruben Gutierrez that's been working at Dodger Stadium for 33 years. In 1994, he lost paychecks. He wasn't able to pay his utility bill. These are people that are directly affected by a strike. The players aren't going to miss a meal. The owners aren't going to miss a meal. But people that no, work... Right. Wait, the wait, stadiums wait, wait, wait. could miss a meal, and hold that's on. who I care about a lot yeah. more than the players. I, 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 well, that's not true, because we don't, let's be, hold on here, let's be honest. We don't, Lisa, we, let's be honest, although that is a terrific story, we don't give a damn about those guys. Because you should, that's no, bad, that's, that's bad That's not true, we don't you go to the game to go buy peanuts. We don't go to buy peanuts, we go to watch guys like John Crook at 300. Crucky, here's a question for you. How about the clubhouse guys that you're so close to? Those people make tips. Because they help make their, their <laughs> bills because they make tips from the players. Agree, if they go on strike, they lose money. I agree, but you can't say that all the players, they're not going to miss a meal because some of these guys, granted they're making good money, but they're making $200,000 a year. Can you live I'm, on that I'm for telling the, you that there are people making eighteen thousand. There are people that are making eighteen thousand dollars a year that aren't protected that, by full time that, salary. Okay, so we got to talk they about depend this. on those that? games. They then depend you know on those it, games. It would be easier for them to go find a job that would be a baseball player who has no social skills <laughs> and no other skills to go out and find a job if they can't play. Who's so fault is that? that? Real quick, well, let's get back to the central well, issue. Yeah. Who fault is that? Well, whose fault is that that they got the jobs they have? You can't, you can't Thank base you. your life on somebody else's life. You when guys they sound so insensitive. I hope you understand. No, no. Let me tell you. 
tell you what, what, you guys sound strike, like spoiled well, athletes. Well, if you let me speak yeah, and right. let me sound at all, it'll be okay. Because when they strike in other parts of the world, when they strike, hold on, Mike, let me get serious, dog. When they strike, when they strike in another part of the world, when all of a sudden, uh, Miss Khan uh, in Detroit all of a sudden cuts off 7,000 people, they don't say, hey, they go up to the boss. Everybody has a certain situation. You cannot compare it and rely on the way this is. This is the way life is. Also, this, is the, this, is the, this is the business. All now, I'm if you're saying is there's not two sides. If you're it's not players versus owners. There are other people whose lives are impacted besides players acting, and owners. There's acting strikes all the time. Tell, do, you, do they care about the viewers? Do they care about you know I'm the grips that, that are working on the stadium? I care about the people that's that work at the stadium. That's the only thing we care about is the viewers, by the way. But let me just say this: <laughs> the baseball union. I worked at a union in a meat packing plant. We went on strike to support another union strike, and that we got fired. They got their jobs back. They didn't support us. I don't consider the baseball union to be like one of those unions, like a real union. Right. I consider them to be partners with the owners. Exactly. So it's a little bit of a different it's situation. A big, it's All right, a big hey, real quickly, right. guys. We know about the luxury tax, the revenue sharing, uh, steroid testing and sort, um, but there are lesser known issues on the yeah, table. I know, right? I read all the demands and there are some lesser known issues that people d need to know about. Uh, steroid needles covered by group medical plan. That's what they, the players want that. Seventh inning stretch to be performed by the Hooters girls. So what about the Hooters girls? They, they lose their jobs. That's, that's, that's a nightmare. Kegs installed at first and third for John Cruck. And forget the Expos. Contract Bud Seedling, for God's all sake. Right. That's hey, Lisa G, we have to say goodbye. If you'd like to walk Lisa Guerrero uh, over to the update desk. <laughs> hey, guys, we will continue to what? That's her job now. Her job is to give other views and other sides and, 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 and open and up you guys. Don't make sense. Simple, it don't make sense. Athlete's mind. <laughs> she did a great job today. That's Bookus. Thanks, Lisa. You were always so open-minded and you were um, so easy to, to not just you know, listen to because you're a legend and you're interesting, but you also listen to others, and that meant a lot to me. Well, thank you for saying that, Lisa. And, and there was so much I learned, too. Remember now, I was in my infant stage there also, and, and all of those guys, man, working together. What I thought was great and unique is that we got the perspective seen from each different sport, whatever we talked about, whenever we had those conversations, and then of course, when, when, when some things that you brought up, it was just it was just an incredible, incredible crew, man. And when I think back, I, I can't tell you how often I think back, and I'm so happy we had those times, really. Because I work in that same building right now. Right now. I, I get know. to go there every morning. It's and like you've graduated. You've like gotten your master's in right. broadcasting. And you came, and it's, can't come back home. And I came back home, came but, back home. but I love that studio. So Super Bowl Sunday uh, is going to bring a lot of fun. We're expecting the biggest audience ever for a Super Bowl, and Usher's going to be doing the halftime. What do you think about the halftime? What are you expecting from Usher? Now, listen, I, I love Usher, and he's a bad man. But, but, but I rate things in, 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 in the totality, and I mean in my head, up in my mind, I can still see it right now when I snuck out that locker room and Pasadena and that smoke, boom, and Michael Jackson hit the stage. Oh, she a bad man, boy, but he got to do something to talk Michael Jackson back in 92. Or, boy, you got some stiff competition. So I know I'm so bad, but he got to come on with it, boy. I got to see it this weekend. Prince 2007. Prince went off too, man. Prince, oh my God. That, that, that was a, a purple rain in the rain. So we've had some incredible, incredible performances at halftime. And I'm sure Usher will knock it out. What those guys did in LA, you know, uh, Snoop and all those guys, man. It, it, it's absolutely amazing. Well, you can mix sports and music, the love, two of our greatest loves in our country together like that. It's always good. It's so good to see you. Thank you for stopping oh, by. I love you.